funny, about 15 years ago on the farm, we never saw soybean aphids. You know what? They weren't even in our country 20 years ago. And now they are one of the worst, one of the most devastating pests that we've got in soybeans. Today we want to talk a little about threshold and when you need to start spraying on your farm. Okay, and I'll say this too. When we look at aphids, just about every crop that we deal with has got aphid issues, whether it's alfalfa yep. or wheat or corn. I mean, there's aphids in almost every crop, or even if you're raising vegetables, aphids can be a big, big issue for you. Some of the things that we're talking about here today, like the families of chemicals, chemistry and, and control thresholds, those hold true in any crop that we're working on. Specifically, we're talking soybeans right now because this is right about the time soybean aphids normally hit around our country. But in wheat earlier this season, many of the same things held true. Okay, so this year, the number one topic seems to be, what can I do to cut my costs? And I'm great with cutting costs as long as it's not cutting your profit, okay? But if you're going to save $2 and it's going to cost you $20, that's not a real wise move. And that's what we worry about with this soybean aphid thing. My number one pitch to you is this. Just make sure you're scouting your fields all the time. Okay, that's the first thing. Because if you don't really know, you're counting on, well, the neighbors are spraying, I must need to spray. Or the neighbors decided not to spray, so I probably don't need to. But anyway, my whole point is make sure you're scouting and look at the thresholds. Now, there are many people that say 250 aphids is the right number. We completely, absolutely disagree with that. That's wrong. Do not look at 250. What you need to look at is come up with your own threshold on your own farm. On our farm, our threshold's somewhere in the range of 10 to 50 aphids per plant based on our our own research and our own studies we found that hey if we don't get aphids under control not only do we have this whole feeding issue and the damage to the crop but also there's introduction of disease so when we have aphid issues we have more disease issues and maybe this is one of the reasons why using a fungicide seems to pay a lot better today than what it used to it's because of all these bug issues we have all right let me just say this real quick i, I think farming used to be thought of as a lifestyle it's definitely thought of as a business now and when we think of things as a business we have to look at what our economic returns are when we've got aphids on our farm at 50 aphids per plant they're going to take away some serious yield. They're going to cost us easily a couple of bushels, if not four or five bushels. And when we look at what we can spray for, pyrethroids now, a lot of them are $2, maybe $3. Even using the best option out there that we'll talk about in just a second for $6 an acre, wow, that's much less than one bushel. And if I'm going to gain two bushels to five bushels, it's easily an economic return to get out and spray for those aphids. Okay, so let's talk about your options. The cheap pyrethroids are great. You just have to use the full rates. Silencer, for example, you go out there with three 3.8 ounces, it's whole different than some of these guys that are trying 3.2 or 2.5 ounces. In most cases, that's not enough because what we find is the old chlorpyrifos, the old lores bands, actually better on aphids than what this, the cheap pyrethroids are unless you use the full rate of the pyrethroid. Okay, so you can go full rate pyrethroid, full rate silencer is $2 an acre, that's it. If you want to go a pint of Lors Band, you're probably going to spend $4. And the most expensive option, and by expensive, I mean still cheap, but you know, the, the it costs more than these others, six bucks an acre for Transform. But Transform has some other good benefits that it may be worth it on your farm to spend the six bucks. The biggest one is Transform doesn't kill the main beneficial insects that are the predators of aphids. For example, in soybeans, the the main predator that we've got is Asian lady beetles. But Transform will kill the aphids, leave the lady beetles alone. And the reason that's so important is now you can spray earlier on aphids. Well, if I can kill those aphids without killing the lady beetles, now all of a sudden, if I do get a second flush of aphids that pops up in my field, I've already got the predators out there in my field. Right. And hopefully those lady beetles then, when they're at big populations and we get some more aphids in, they're able to do the job for me late. Our suggestion for you is scout your fields, make sure you're using a good product at the right rate, whether it's the, the cheap pyrethroid, use the full rate, you can use some lores band, you can use one of the combination products out there, or transform if you want to save the lady beetles. And look real hard at economics. Just because soybeans are eight or nine dollars a bushel instead of 15, that doesn't mean you've got to spend zero. Okay, you're, if you're only going to spend two or six dollars, you don't have to have a lot of yield gain to justify that treatment. And the last thing I'd say too is this transform that we talk about is labeled in soybeans, but there's another product called Closer that has the same active ingredient that's labeled for a bunch of different vegetable and, and other crops. So if you're in another crop and you say, you know, aphids are a problem for me, I wish I had an option like that, check out transform and check out Closer and see if you've got one label for the crops you're raising. Regardless of the crop you're raising, you might face our Weed of the Week. We'll talk about it coming up next.